Hey, what's up, guys? It's Darkroom Duels, and today I'm going to be doing a vampire deck profile. So somebody actually, actually quite a few people have requested me to do a competitive vampire deck, or as competitive as possible vampire deck as I could make it. And so I finally think I've cracked the code on vampires and made a pretty decent deck. I mean, I think it's actually really good. Um, it does what I need it to do. I've carried it on Wygo Pro. It's beaten Sky Strikers. It's beaten Altergeist. It's beaten, you know, I mean, all sorts of stacks. Uh, I've been playing around with it for quite a while now. It's really, really fun, and I really want to show you guys this. So before we get into this, guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Hit that bell in there so you can become part of the notification squad, and let's get straight on into this. So first off, we're going to be playing two copies of Vampire um, Scarlet Scourge. You need two copies of Scarlet Scourge because if this card is normal or special summon, you get to pay a thousand life once on target a vampire in your grave except another copy of itself and special summon it. Uh, but it can attack this turn, and then once per turn, you can use this effect of uh, Scarlet Scourge at the end of the battle phase. If this card destroys um, a monster by battle, you can special summon that monster from the graveyard to your field. So it can just take an opponent's monster, which is really, really cool. Then I play two copies of Vampire Frawlin because this deck is actually a vampire zombie deck. So you need the Frawlins in here just to be able to boost your, you know, zombies, all your zombies up by up to 3,000 attack points, which is really, really cool. And when she can instantly special summon herself out of the hand just by battling. And she's searchable by Vampire Familiar, which is really, really cool. Uh, being able to special summon her or just add her to hand off of the familiar. That's why I play as her too. Uh, then I play one copy of Vampire Shadow. Um, Vampire Shadow is not what it used to be. I remember when you play three of this in a vampire deck. But uh, when this card is normal summon, you could special summon one vampire, one dark vampire monster from your hand or deck, except another copy of itself. But it cannot it, for for the rest of the turn. Um, this card cannot be used as XYZ material, except for the XYZ summon of a dark monster. And for the rest of the turn. Um, that monster can attack, uh, but that, but only that monster can attack for the rest of the turn. Then I play something that I don't see a lot of other people playing, and that is one copy of Vampire Vamp. Uh, vampire Vamp is like my favorite vampire. She is literally my favorite vampire for multiple reasons. Um, she is basically relinquished, and she gains so much attack. Her and Frolin can OTK your opponent so easily once per turn. Uh, when this card or a vampire monster is normal summoned to your side of the field, you can target a monster your opponent controls whose attack is higher than this card. Equip it to this card. This card um, gains attack equal to the combined original attack of all monsters equipped to this card. Um, by this effect, and this card is sent to the graveyard while equipped with a card by this effect. You can special summon this card from the graveyard to your side of the field. So it's really, really good. Like really, really good to have for all, or really good to have for all and, and vamp on the field at the same time. Like if you take something that has like five thousand attack or like three thousand attack, like let's just say you take a Boral Sword off your opponent's side of the field when you summon Vamp, you can literally equip it to Vamp, and then after you do, just make her five thousand attack, and then attack with her into your opponent's life points directly with Frawlin and this, pay three thousand, and then deal eight thousand to your opponent in one hit. So it's it's really really good, and I don't know why more people don't play it. Like I understand that it's a little bit hard to play but we have normal summons in the deck now with vampire retainer and vampire familiar that you can just instantly normal summon out of your hand and get her to steal an opponent's monster which is really cool but basically both of these do the same thing um if this card is special summon you pay 500 life points add either a vampire monster or vampire spell or trap from your deck to your hand which retainer adds spells and traps and vampire familiar adds um monsters and then you can send a vampire card from your hand or face them to your side of the field to the grave and then special summon this card from your grave but banish it when it leaves the field so really good effects really important um, and that's it for the vampires, guys. For the zombie support, we're going to be playing one copy of Gozuki because it's essentially Foolish Burial. Uh, two copies of Mizuki. I actually bumped this down to three. I had a conversation on one of CaliFX videos about this, and he was playing like one, two copies of this. And I decided, you know what? I'm going to test it at two, and I actually didn't really miss the third one. I actually think he was totally right. You don't need the third Mizuki anymore. Like, the deck moves so fast with all the other stuff that we're playing. I think two is plenty. Um, two copy or three copies of Shirinui Solitaire just to be able to summon our Unizombi. Um, three copies of Unizombi. You need the Unizombi in here because Unizombi just helps out with so many different plays. One copy of Zombie Master. Zombie Master just revives any level four or lower zombie monster from your graveyard. 
Um, and then I have a personal little tech engine in here that I'm going to show you guys after I move this. So let me move this out of the way. That's pretty much it for the monsters. We have a couple of more monsters. I'm going to get you guys to guess the engine. We're going to do something a little different. Um, so the engine is a six card engine. Okay. And it is a zombies. So that's all I'm going to tell you. It's a six card engine that I have made. But, I mean, some people play this in here. It's not my personal tech, but it's six cards, okay? So comment down below. Tell me what you think this is. So I'm going to reveal it in three, two, one. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell down there. So I've actually found that the most competitive way to play zombies is go figure with zombie horde. So I'm playing two, two, and two of the zombie monsters, and that's two glow up bloom, two copies of necro netherworld banshee, and two copies of baller draught. Um, it's really easy to get these out and really easy to resolve these. Glow Up Bloom seems to be like the MVP. I thought about even bumping it up to three because I play a lot of level five or higher zombie monsters. If this card is sent to the grave, you could banish it from your grave and then add a level five or higher zombie monster from your deck to your hand. That can be Baller Draught. That can be Scarlet Scourge. That can be Frawlin. That can be any of them. Like, it's just amazing. And if Zombie World is on the field, you can special summon the monster from your deck instead. Also, in either case, special summon monsters for the rest of the turn, except zombie monsters. We don't care. Everything's zombie anyways. I'm not concerned about that. Um, Necro, Netherworld, Banshee, she just adds the field spell or activates it. Um, and then Baller Draw just keeps coming back and is really a thorn in my opponent's side. So, that's my little sub-engine in this deck. It actually, the deck is 43 cards, I believe. 43, 44 cards. Because I couldn't cut it down with this engine and terraformings and everything in the deck. So, I couldn't find what I wanted to drop. So, if you see anything you want to drop, tell me. Um, but that's my little sub-engine. This deck actually works really well with Baller Draw and Glow Bloom and Banshee, too. Um, then for the spells, guys, we're going to play two copies of Terraforming, just to search out our zombie world. Two copies of Vampire Desires. Desires is interesting in here. Desires basically is like, hey, it's a foolish burial, and it lets you, like, you can target a face-up monster you control, send a vampire monster from your deck to the grave with a different level from that monster, and if you do, the target monster becomes that level. So that's really good to be able to, like manipulate your levels like if you have scarlet scourge on field and the second zombie on the field you can activate desires to be able to go into the vampire vampire um sheridan like you can go to vampire sheridan really easily that way um but the other effect is you get to target a zombie mo or vampire monster in your grave and send a monster you control to the grave and if you do special summon it so kind of like circle the fire kings in a way you get to destroy one and then special summon one back so it's kind of interesting so it's a good two of um, I think Vampire Domain is a good three of. Like, I don't think I'd ever play this at anything less than three. Um, once per turn, you can pay 500 life points, and during your main phase this turn, you can normal summon an additional vampire. And then if you inflict damage to your opponent, um, by a vampire, you gain that many life points. So, Frawlin just makes his card nuts. So, that's why I play it at three. Um, because <clears throat> it just combos so well with Frawlin. I might drop it down, I might drop it down to two to make this card, like, 40, 40 cards. But, I, I don't know. And then three copies of Zombie World. Zombie World is amazing in this deck because it makes everything zombies and um, your opponent cannot tribute monsters or, except for zombies. Like, everything on the field becomes zombies, and that's really good. It can shut down a lot of decks if you're playing against any deck that tribute summons. It can really hurt your opponent. So uh, that's it for the spells. We don't play that many spells. We play a lot of monsters, but not a lot of spells and not a lot of traps. So for the traps, we're only playing five, and that is two copies of Vampire Awakening and three copies of Vampire Domain. Domain is just so busted in this deck. Um, Awakening's pretty good too. Awakening lets you special summon a vampire from your deck but destroy it during an end phase, and Domain is basically Infernity Barrier. Um, if you have a vampire monster, when a spell trap or monster effect is activated while you control a vampire monster, negate the activation if you do destroy it. Then if it was a monster card, gain life once equal to the original attack of the monster you negated. That is really, really good, and really, really busted, and I have saved myself a lot with this card, because, like, if your opponent activates Boral Sword, you can activate this, and literally negate the activation of your Boral Sword, switching something to defense. And if you do, you destroy the Boral Sword and then gain whatever attack it had, which would be 3,000. And that's just amazing. Um, it's really good, and it's a speed spell 3 counter trap, so it's always a 3 of, in my opinion. Um, and that's it for the main deck, guys. So for the extra deck, the extra deck's going to get a little nuts, okay? Because it has Baller Draught, and it has Synchro, or it has Synchros and Links, and... All sorts of crazy stuff. So we only play one XYZ monster, and that's uh, Vampire Sheridan. You just make this with two uh, level 6 Vampire monsters, so it's really easy to make. 
Uh, two copies of Vampire Sucker. Vampire Sucker is here because it's the best Link Summon monster that you can ever summon in any zombie type deck, and it's super good, so you always want to play that. One Wee Witch because everything just about is dark. Summon Sorceress just to be able to special summon any zombie from your deck. Uh, Link Rebo for the Glow Up Bloom. And one copy of Boral Sword because it's really easy to summon Boral Sword and I'm still proxying it. If you guys want to check out how to make proxies, I have it on my channel. I'm like the first one that comes up if you actually search proxies for Yu-Gi-Oh cards. And you can make these. Uh, you can actually change the quality by using different paper and stuff like that. Crystal Wing. You can make Crystal Wing really easy off of a Dawn Dragster that's dead. Like you just summon Dawn Dragster really easily in this deck by using like Unizombie and... Um, any other zombie monster that's level 3, like a level 3 um, Unizombie and a level 4 monster, and then you use Glow Up Bloom and the Dawn Dragster after you've gotten a couple of negates out of Dawn Dragster and you make Crystal Wing. Boral uh, Load Savage Dragon, really easily made in this deck as well, just to get the negations because you have all these that you're going to send to the grave anyways. Beals, really easy to make again, um, and really hard. Some decks have a really hard out to uh, Beals, like it's really hard for them to out it and they just can't and they just surrender. Um, Shiranui Shogun Saiga, really easy to make and just gets really big for no reason. Cyframe Lord Omega, any zombie deck plays this. Uh, Red Eyes Zombie Necro Dragon, a big, big, big zombie that's level 7. You can also make this and then make Crystal Wing if you want to go that route, if you need to get into Crystal Wing fast. Um, F.A. Dawn Dragster, just here for negations and good level 7. And then I play one Brionic. Brionic is interesting in this deck. I wanted to play originally this engine where I played the uh, Super Poly and Dragon's Mirror and then played Starving Venom and Dragon Necro Nether Soul, but I never got around to finding room for it because I, I was already playing it at like 43 cards and I was like, I, I don't have room for this. I can't do this. So I dropped it out and I ended up throwing in Brionic and Red Eyes because I just wanted to play those. But that's pretty much it for the deck, guys. I hope you enjoyed this deck. It's really fun. It's really quirky because, like, it's different than something you're going to see anywhere else on YouTube. And that's what I try and bring you guys is something a little bit different on a deck that you guys know and love. So, anyways, guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you think of this deck down in the comments down below. And definitely give me a like down there. And hit that bell so you can become part of the notification squad. And hit right here in the middle of your screen. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you guys can become a part of the Dark Armed Alliance army. So, anyways, guys, this is Dark Armed Duels. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. See you around, guys.